السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين. وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد. اللهم صل على محمد وآل وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في العربين فجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوان الرسول I am grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this opportunity and blessing of being with you especially in this blessed month of Sha'ban and in these days and nights that belong to Ahlul Bayt al Salam. We have the first anniversary of Imam Hussein and then we have the first anniversary of the Abbas and Imam Sajjal and then inshallah soon Imam Zaman. So it's a very happy for occasion for me and inshallah I hope and I pray that the time we spend together tonight would be beneficial inshallah for us something to remind ourselves of our historical role to play in this time and age. Because I have only one session with you, so I want to speak about many, many things, but uh, I don't want also to tire you, so I just try to be giving you some ideas that later you can follow up. And about many issues that I mentioned, also I have uh, some lectures and some papers, so those who are interested, you know, they can follow up uh, on the internet. Uh, so sometimes I give you one word, but that word has something uh, behind it that can be explored more if you follow up, you know, this uh, in my lectures and papers. Anyway, what I thought what would be useful according to, of course, the topic proposed and my understanding of our situation is first of all to start with a little reflection on the concept of Vilaya. And then from there I will try to proceed and explain what would be our responsibility today as the people who want to prepare for coming of Imam Mahdi Sharif. We have heard a lot about Wilaya. Wilaya, Wali, Awliya, Mawla. In different ways we have been talking and hearing but I think in most of the time we haven't been able to really understand what is Velaya. Velaya is a very profound Quranic concept. And like other concepts in the Quran, it has a whole philosophy behind it. Sometimes because we know Arabic or we read translations of the Quran, we think that we understand the meaning. For example, say Rahma, we know what is Rahma, or we translate it to mercy, so we know mercy. No, this is not as easy as this. <coughs> Any word which comes in the Quran has a whole philosophy behind it. Just to be able to understand what is Rahma, you need hours and hours of discussion. What is haq? It's not just enough to say truth. If you want to understand the whole Quranic perspective on haq, you need hours of discussion. About hayat, what is hayat? What is tasbih? A few years ago I suggested to one of the sisters in Jamaat Zahra to do her dissertation on tasbih. And it came up to be 300, it's more than 300 pages, just on what is the Quranic understanding of tasbih. 
what is the significance of tasbih. So, these words which come in the Quran need real reflection. One of these words is the word Vilaya. What is Vilaya? It's very difficult to find an equivalent for Vilaya. Some people say guardianship, but Vilaya is not just guardianship. Vilaya is not just love. Vilaya is not just leadership. It's not just following. None of these words can do justice with Vilaya. In my understanding, Velaya means belonging to a camp, to a group, to a party, which is organized, it has its leadership, it has its hierarchy, it's working towards certain aims and objectives, and they have a very well-defined identity for them. They are not easily getting mixed with other people. Physically, they mix. Socially, they interact. But they are very focused on what they want to do. So, Velaya is membership, is belonging to this. It can be the one who is on the very top. Allahu so Allah is Wali. It can be from the bottom. So we are Wali for Allah. Allah is our Wali. What does it mean? It means that we both belong to the same camp, to the same party. But there's a difference of task, difference of positions. The Prophet and Ahlul Bayt and Musalam are our awliya. We are also their awliya. They are our mawali. We are also their mawali. And also, horizontally, al mu'minun wal mu'minat ba'aduhum awliya wa ba'd. All the believers are wali for each other. So it's from top to bottom, bottom to top, and also vertically. They have a very clear understanding of what they want to do in this world. And inshallah I will mention major elements in this Velaya. We have also an opposite group. They have also their own Velaya. We have the opposite party that they have their own Velaya. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاءُ الْمُطَّاعُوتِ So instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have shaitan. Instead of prophet and imams, they have their Fir'aun and Namrud and this type of people. Between them, there is understanding. There is distribution of tasks. And then, when we convert these two camps with each other, then each camp, with respect to the other, they have the relation of adawa. So, vali is when you refer to the internal relation between members of the same camp, and then compared to the other camp, it's adawa. For example, on the day of Khadir, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma waliman walah wa adaman ada. This waliman walah doesn't mean love whoever loves Ali. It's not just a matter of love. It's not a matter of friendship. Or oh, Allah be friend of whoever is Ali's friend. No. It's a matter of walaya. Whoever joins Ali, and supports Ali and works with Ali for the same causes that Ali is working for. Whoever belongs to the community headed by Ali under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be with him. Whoever works against this, then be against them. So it's not a matter of just love or friendship. 
is much more than that. So, those who are vicious, they have their own belaya, their own camp. Those who are virtuous, they have their own camp. But, something that sometimes, unfortunately, we miss is that we think all people are divided into two groups. We think that people are either in this camp or in that camp. I think this is wrong. It's not that everyone who is not with us is against us. We have three groups of people and two camps. How it comes? We have people who are working for good causes. We have people who work for bad causes. And we have many people in between. They don't belong to any camp. They don't belong to any organized group. They don't have any leadership. They don't have any clear philosophy of what they do. La ilaha ula wa la ilaha ula. Mudhabdabin bayna dhalik. There is a great number of people. Many times actually the majority of people, they don't belong to any organized camp. They are not under the wilayah of Allah. They are not necessarily under the wilayah of shaitan in the sense that they work day and night for shaitan. They have their own way of thinking. They have not really thought about these issues seriously. And it's a great mistake if we think that these people are against. These people can be the best supporters of haq, the best supporters of virtues, if we can approach them. It's a very important lesson for us. Never think that people just because they don't look, you know, Islamic or they don't look, you know, to be, for example, committed to certain virtues that we have, they are bad people. No. Majority of people are not necessarily bad people. Even if they do some of the things which are not good, it doesn't mean they are bad people. It's not that they are against us. They have agenda against us. No. They just don't know. They are confused. Those who are really bad are not that many. So it's our responsibility to reach out to these people. Otherwise, the opposite camp can take them towards themselves. So, we have three groups of people, but two organized camps or parties. When it comes to the camp of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the party which is the party of light, which is the party of truth, the party of virtues, there are three elements which define the relationship. In the opposite party, there are two elements. One is missing. In the party of truth, there is ma'rifa, there is obedience, and there is love. In the other party, there is ma'rifa, there is obedience, but no love. Ma'rifah in the party of Haq is Ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place. Ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is a requirement for someone who is in that camp. How can you be part of a camp and you don't know who is the head? Where does authority come from? To whom you have to be answerable? So Ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very important. So if you want to make sure that we are in the right group and we can continue to be a member of that group, we should increase our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma arrifni nafsak. We need to try hard to have ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no time to say, what does ma'rifah mean? That's another issue. We should also have ma'rifah of those who lead us towards the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma'rifah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
ma'rif of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as those who help us understand the true Islam which was brought by the Prophet. And in particular, ma'rifa of the leader of the community in this age, the ma'rifa of Imam Zaman, the Hujj of Allah for this age. You know, Sunni Shia all have narrated this beautiful hadith. Man mata wa lam ya'rif Imam Zaman, he mata mita tan jahili. Whoever dies without knowing Imam of his age, his death would be like the people who died in the age of ignorance. This hadith says many things. Just if you reflect on this hadith, it can explain what we need to have today as a real connection to Imam Zaman. Unfortunately, many of us, our connection to Imam Zaman is not a connection that we should have with, a, with an Imam who is alive, who is leading us, and to whom we should be answerable. We have a relation with Imam Zaman, which is just a relation of love and faith, that change of time is not having any implication for us. In other words, we have a relation with Imam Zaman which unfortunately is not dynamic. Our relation today with Imam Zaman and the relation of Mu'mineen 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago is the same. In other words, we don't understand really what Imam Zaman is expecting from us today. So this is not enough when you say you should know the leader of your time. It doesn't mean just to know that there is such a leader. His name is so and so. His father was so and so. His mother was so and so. His date of birth was so and so. This is not enough as ma'rifa of the leader of your time. When we say you should know the leader of your time, it means that you should know your time. You should know what your leader wants you at this time who are the people who are working with him who are the people who are working against him what are his challenges what are his plans and what can you do for him in this time if you don't have all these things then you don't have ma'rifa of imam of your age your love for imam is the love, like the love of people who lived 1000 years ago Maybe actually they knew more than us. If you know, we really study and work hard, can we understand Imam Zaman better than what is presented in the Qayba of Shaykh Tusi or Qayba of Nu'mani? They understood Imam Zaman better than us. This is not enough. We need to know what Imam is expecting from us today. It's like a compass that in every moment is to show the direction. If you take the compass from one place to another place, maybe it takes two seconds, few seconds, then quickly find out the direction. A true Shia is the one that when you take him from any place and put him in another place, after a short time, finds the direction, connects himself to Imam and shows to other people how to connect to Imam. This is ma'rifa of Imam of our time. You may say, how this is possible? How can we know? what Imam expects from us without listening to Imam. This is the whole challenge. This is actually what makes the Shia of this time very valuable. In a famous hadith, Imam Zayn al-Abidin told Abu Khalid al-Kabri, Ya Abu Khalid, the people of Akhir al-Zaman, the people of the time of occultation, 
افضل و اهل کل زمان they are the best people of all ages why why they are the best people of all ages لأن الله سبحانه وتعالى آتاهم من العقول والأفهام والمعرفة ما صارت به الغيبة عندهم بمنزلة المشاهدة Allah has given them so much of knowledge and understanding that for them seeing Imam or not seeing Imam listening to Imam directly or not listening to Imam is not making any difference If you have a, I don't know, member of staff, if you have an employee, a deputy, someone who works for you, what can make him very special is that he knows exactly what you want, so you don't need to tell him all the time, do this, don't do this. If you trust him that he understands what you want, you don't need to always communicate to him. Even you can travel and be confident that he is doing the best job. The mu'mineen of this time, they should have that much of ma'rifah, they should have that much of understanding, which is more than knowledge, that they know what Imam wants from them. In Dua Ya'ah, we have beautiful expression. When we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us among the people who support Imam, who help Imam, who become martyrs in front of Imam, we have two requests. One is, Al-Mumtathilina Al-Awamirih. We want to implement his commands. Imam has asked us already many things. For example, Imam said, أَمَّا الْحَوَادِثُ الْوَاقِعَ فَرْجِعُوا فِيهَا إِلَى رُوَاتِ أَحَادِثِنَا Have we implemented this or not? Inshallah we have. If not, we have to implement. But, there are also many things that we haven't received any direct communication from Imam. We need to understand the will of Imam. And this is what we say, As-sabiqeena ila iradatih. Irada is different from awamir. Awamir are commands which are formally, clearly, expressly communicated to us. But we need to be understanding irada of Imam, will of Imam, even if it's not expressed. And this is the challenge. If the people in the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam were listening to his commands and were not following, today we have to understand the will of Imam and do it and precede as sabiqin You see the difference? They were listening to the commands of Imam and not doing anything. We have to discover the will of Imam and then proceed. How much is the difference? And this is what makes the people of this time Sometimes, unfortunately, people think that we should get ready so that when Imam comes, we help him. Not knowing that we should help Imam Zaman right now. Not just we wait for him to come and help him. It's impossible to help Imam Zaman when he comes if you have not been already helping him before he comes. It's impossible to serve him when he comes if you have not been among the people who were serving him before he comes. And even more. Imam Zaman needs our help today much more than when he comes. When he himself is there, he can communicate. He can tell people what he wants. People can look at him, listen to him, be inspired by just looking at him. He needs less help than today when he cannot speak to people. He needs people who are so committed, so understanding, so intelligent. 
that they can prepare for him to come. If, for example, I am leader of a community, do I need my helpers to help me more when I am away or when I am present? When I am away, I need more help. You have to do extra so that you can cover my gap, my absence. If you travel and you leave your family, for example, father and mother travel, they have a, for example, child who is 20 years old, another is 15, another is 10, so they leave them for a few days. Do you expect more responsibility, more commitment from your children when you are away or when you are there? If I am there, I can make sure nothing goes wrong. I can protect all the children. When I travel, I expect my eldest children to work more. They should reduce their sleep. They should reduce, you know, their comfort. They shouldn't go that much for other things, you know, like watching, I don't know, a game or whatever, because now I am not there. When I come, they can a little bit relax. Imam Zaman Ajjad Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif needs our help today much more than the time he comes. And something I have also to say, I am sorry that I say, you know, things quickly because the time is very limited. There is a difference between Imam Zaman and most of the leaders that are appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like prophets, there's a difference. In particular, there's a difference between coming of Imam Zaman and coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm not saying there's a difference between their characters. This is wrong. Some people think Imam Zaman's character is different. No. Imam Zaman's character and character of the Prophet, they are very similar. Even we have a beautiful hadith of Loh, the hadith of Jabir, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he refers to the 12th Imam, he says that he is rahmatun lil alam. Imam Zaman is mercy for mankind. But the way Allah gifted people with Rasulullah is different from the way he's going to give people with Imam Zaman. This is very important for us to know. When Rasulullah was gifted to people, did that society deserve Rasulullah? Was there anything in that society that could give Bashara that as a result of their success, their progress, their virtuous life, their understanding, their intelligence, their commitment, then they would be gifted with Rasulullah? No. That society was actually quite opposite. It's a society full of darkness. It's a society full of ignorance, mischief, corruption. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends prophets not expecting people to be prepared. The prophets can come to awaken people, to prepare people. But the case of Imam Zaman is different. Imam Zaman is the leader that would come when people are ready. When people, I'm not saying all people, at least there must be some people who have shown that much of preparation, mentally, spiritually, intellectually, that then Allah would gift them with a person who can take them further. In other words, Imam Zaman is the fruit of creation of human beings. Akhir zaman when inshallah justice, peace is going to prevail, is going to dominate, would not be happening by miracles. Would not be like Rasulullah being given to a society which was full of mischief. Humanity should grow. Humanity should mature so that 
they would be able to welcome the last Hujjah of Allah who would finish the job, not to start the job. This is a big difference. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْمِيزَانِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعْهُمُ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسِ بِالْقِسْتِ So the whole idea is that people should rise and try to establish justice, equity, and of course Imam Zaman is leading them. But if people don't want to stand up for that, if people don't want to do anything, if we expect people to be like the people of Mecca in the time of Jahiliya and then a light comes and establishes justice, this is impossible. This is why in our hadith you find that before Imam Zaman comes, there are people who prepare for him. They prepare for him. These are the people who we said are afdalu ahli kulli zaman. So what happens is that these two camps that have always been there from the beginning of history of mankind, they continue their development. And then just before coming of Imam Zaman, both camps, in my understanding, would reach their final stage of development. The camp of Shaitan would be in their strongest position in Akhir Zaman. The camp of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the camp of Haq, the camp of virtues, also would be in their strongest position. In other words, you would have the best of people in that time. The best of understanding in that time. And also the worst people. And I think quantity-wise, unfortunately, everything will be in the favor of the camp of Batman, the camp of falsehood, quantity-wise. But quality-wise, those understanding, committed, pious mu'minin of Akhir zaman their quality is so high. They are like kibrit ahmar, as we say in our hadith. You know, like red match, which means very hard to find, but you cannot say what is the value. Each of them worth a nation. And Ibrahim Khan Ummah. A moment of that caliber, you cannot say what is the value of that moment. One moment can change the whole world. Look at Imam Khomeini. He was just one person. Look at Allah Tabatabai. One man, but this Allah Tabatabai, how much he has contributed? How much knowledge? How much taqwa? How many students he has trained? And there are many people, alhamdulillah, that we have seen and we see in our life that they have great, good impact. So, both camps will reach their peak. And inshallah, this is going to happen. That there would be people who would be able to prepare and welcome Imam for finishing the job. Sometimes I use this example. I say, imagine you have started a school and you give people syllabus, you give them teachers, and you tell them that there is also a special teacher that is the most knowledgeable, the most experienced, with the best character, 
that we also have it on reserve for you. Students who are understanding and committed, they say, we want to hurry, we want to learn everything quickly, we want to benefit from the teachers so that whatever they can teach us, we learn, and then inshallah, we will be able to have access to that best teacher. Those who are lazy, they don't listen to any teacher, they don't read any book, and when we ask them why you are not working hard, they say, because we don't have the best teacher. If we have the best teacher, we become good students. Say, sorry, this is not the way it works. You have to appreciate what you have been given, you have put into practice what you have learned from your ordinary teacher. We see that still we are stuck with ABC. And then we expect Imam Zaman to come, us, to come and teach us. Still we suffer from really silly problems. Still we are not honest. Still we are not trustworthy. I'm not saying everyone. I'm saying some of us. Still we do zone to each other. Husband and wife sometimes do zoom to each other. In-laws sometimes do zoom to their son-in-law, daughter-in-law sometimes, but uh, you know, vice versa. To neighbors, to colleagues, to customers. When we are doing zoom, how can we be expecting that the man who is going to establish universal justice to come and say, I will train you? Like a person who doesn't wash his hand and he says, I want to learn from the person who is the best expert in hygienic. You don't wash your hand and then you are expecting the best expert to come. Imam Zaman is going to establish universal justice. Just one aspect of this justice is La yajrmannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'adilu, a'adilu. Allah says, even with respect to your enemies, you have to be just. Who is your enemy? For example, if Yazid, the killer of Imam Hussein, okay, if he has a case in the court in which I am the judge, can I do injustice to Yazid and take the favor or the side of the opposite party because he is, for example, a lover of Hussein? Even between Yazid and lover of Hussein, I cannot take favor of the other party. I have to be just. How many people are able to say that we are just even to our enemies? I think we are not even just to our friends, to our family members. How many cases I personally know that husband does injustice or wife does injustice? How can we expect them to be a helper for the one who wants to establish universal justice? So, what is very important to remember is that the only people who can be helping Imam Zaman when he comes are the people who have helped him before he comes. Helping him in what? Helping him in preparing for his coming. How do we? How should we prepare ourselves? What are the things that we have to take on board? It's easy to understand. What he's going to do? You have to start doing. You have to start implementing. For example, if you are inviting. A doctor to come because, for example, we have an epidemic disease. We want a doctor who is expert in dealing with this type of disease to come and help us. So what do you come before he comes? You try to prepare a kind of clinic, hospital, clean bed, I don't know, towels, sheets. Train some people as nurse because one doctor cannot do everything by himself. He needs nurses, he needs people who can help him. Try to 
bring people together, have a list of the people who are ill, so that when he comes, right away he starts. Not that you wait for him to come, then he says, you know, let us have a building, let us have a center, let us have a you know, school, let us have some teachers. This is not working. Everything should be made ready so that when he comes, he doesn't need even to wait one minute so that we get ready. This is why I say always to my brothers and sisters that Imam Zaman is waiting for us. We are not waiting for him. It's one to think that we are waiting for him. He is waiting for us. Because he has no other job. It's not that Imam is busy with something and he's waiting for uh, he's, uh, we, uh, we are waiting for him. He is waiting for us to wake up. He is waiting for us to get ready, to prepare. If we are ready today, he would not come tomorrow, he would come today. If we are ready in the morning, he would come in the morning. It's impossible that he delays. Someone who has been waiting for 14 centuries, then when people are ready, then he would say, okay, I need another day, I need another week. No. He's waiting just for our true call. Not just saying, you know, Ajjal ala zuhuri. This is not true call. The true call is when we are ready, we have done our job, everything is ready, say, Please welcome. Then for sure, he will not delay even a day. So, Vilaya in this camp is based on Ma'rifa, and this Ma'rifa, as I said, should be with understanding what Imam wants from you today. This is something that we have to really work hard to understand. Obedience. If you have no obedience, you cannot achieve anything. Obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obedience to Rasulullah, obedience to those who are in charge. It's impossible without obedience we achieve anything. Actually, this obedience is a natural result of ma'rifah. It's impossible to have proper ma'rifah and don't obey. Those who don't obey, they don't understand. They don't understand why they are here. They don't understand what is the purpose of life. They don't understand what is their relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you understand, you obey out of joy. You know, this uh, sentence in Munajat Sha'baniya is very beautiful. Inshallah, Allah gives us tawfiq to recite Munajat Sha'bani in this month with understanding. In the end of dua, we say, Ilahi al-haqni bin nur izzak al-abhaj fa'akuna laka arifa wa'an sawaka munharifa wa minka khaifan muraqiba ya za al-jalali wa al-ikram. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us among the people that have ma'rifah of him. They are arif. Because they have ma'rifah of Allah, then they lose their interest in anything other than Allah. Wa I don't have any interest in anyone else. When I have the purest of the pure, the most beautiful, the most perfect source of light and goodness, how can I be interested in other things as a replacement? Under, the, under Allah is okay, but not a replacement for Allah. It's impossible. And then, This is very beautiful. Someone who knows Allah and has fallen in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always worried. I don't want to do anything to make my beloved unhappy with me. If you really love someone, you try to only do something to please him or please her. 
not out of fear in the sense that they will beat me, they will prison me. No. I don't want to lose them. I don't want to lose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, it reaches a point that you just look for opportunity to do something. Maybe that person, that beloved, doesn't need water. But, you know, I'm just trying to do something. I bring water, I bring coffee, I bring drink. I want to do something just maybe this is what he wants. Maybe this is what she wants. Those who really love Allah, love Imam Zaman, obedience for them is not a burden. Obedience for them is not out of fear. Obedience is out of love. So we have ma'rifa, we have obedience, and we have love. Even this love continues on the day of judgment. This is also a very important point. On the day of judgment, you know how difficult it is. The day that man would run away from his brothers, parents, wife, husband, children. The day that everyone wants to make other people suffer instead of him. Yaftadi. They want to give as ransom their children, their spouse, their family, their tribe, or the whole mankind, they want to give everyone so that they are freed. But this is not for Mu'mini. This is not for the people who are in this camp. These people will remain as friends. Muttaqeen will not forget each other. We'll remain Akhilla. We'll remain as friends. On the day of judgment, they don't forget each other. They help each other. They do shafa for each other. A good husband would not forget his wife and children. A good wife would not forget her husband and children. There is a beautiful hadith that on the day of judgment, a man is judged to go to heaven. But his wife and children have not done that good. So they cannot join him. Then hadith says, he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, Whatever I did, I did it for myself and for my family. Then Allah says to the angels, let them join him without dividing his good actions into the number of the family. And this is why Allah says, So love will endure because this love is real love. But the opposite camp, they have ma'rifa. They know who is the leader to whom they should communicate. They always constant communication and nashayateen la yuhuna ba'dhum ila ba'dh. They obey each other. You look at the people who were with Muhammad, they obeyed Muhammad. Like math, full obedience, discipline, organization, everything is there. But love is not there. There is no love. This is why on the day of judgment when realities become manifest, they will see that they are indeed enemies for each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who were followed, they will try to distance themselves from their followers. Shaitan says, I have nothing to do with you. Pharaoh says, I have nothing to do with you. Namrud says, I have nothing to do with you. And those people will realize that they wasted their life in following those people. We wish we had a chance to go back to dunya 
and change these people with good leaders. We don't want these people. We want to distance ourselves from these people. But no chance. It's too late. So there is no love. Tahsabuhum jam'a wa qulubuhum shatta. There is no love. But here is love. So ma'rifa is there. Ta'a is there. Mahabba is there. But here there is ma'rifa. There is ta'a, no mahabba. No love. Because love, a real love, can only be when Allah is there. It's impossible to have real love without connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Real mercy without connection to Allah. Because Allah is the source of love. Allah is the source of mercy. Anyone who claims to have love or mercy without connection to Allah, it's not honest. It's impossible. So, now I think this puts us in a position that we can understand what is our historical role in this time. We have great opportunity to raise ourselves to afdal ahl kull zaman to become those people that are the best people of all ages or we can betray our Imam Zaman and leave him alone in a time that he is in great need. Each of us is a great asset for Imam Zaman. Each of us is a great amana. Our youths, our children, these are amana of Imam Zaman. Who is going to take care of this amana? If we don't take care of amana of Imam Zaman, we are betraying Imam Zaman. And money that belongs to Imam Zaman is very important. Even one penny belonging to Imam Zaman, one cent belonging to Imam Zaman is very important. But what about the youths that belong to Imam Zaman? How much we can value the youths? Can I say every single girl or boy in this community, for example, values one million dollar, one billion dollar? I cannot. Bring anything from dunya to say how important is each member of community for Imam Zaman. How much you can value your children by money? Can you say, for example, my eldest daughter is worth this much money, my, I don't know, son this much money. Every single child in this community, every single youth in this community is more valuable than the whole world. And if we don't do our best to put them in the right track and help them grow, help them develop and become true human beings, true followers of truth, followers of light, followers of love, mercy, which all together, if you put all these things together means a true helper of Imam Zaman, then we have not fulfilled our responsibility. We have not carried out our historical responsibility. So not only we have to look after ourselves and our family, we have to look after our community. And then we have to reach out. We should not let people remain in an ambiguous situation about us because this can lead to suspicion, this can lead to enmity. When people don't know you, then they become suspicious. And then they become enemies. You have to reach out, you have to introduce yourself, you have to build bridges so that they know that you want good for everyone. You want prosperity for everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lennas. This is our philosophy. We are brought by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the benefit of Nas, for the benefit of mankind, not Alam Nas, we don't want to rule. It's not that we are after power, we are after position. No, we just want to serve. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrajat Nas, for the benefit of mankind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah Bless this community, help this community, inshallah, with their development, with their progress, inshallah, and make them, inshallah, 
a very successful community. Inshallah, I hope that you will be an example for other communities. Every community has to work hard to become example. Unless you try to be example, you will not succeed. If you say, you know, I want minimum success, no. You have to work so hard that you be example, inshallah, for others. Waj'alna lil muttaqina imam. Not waj'alna min al muttaqin. Waj'alna min al muttaqin is not enough. Waj'alna lil muttaqina imam. We should try to be role models, leaders for pious people. So, inshallah, this community and other communities each have the responsibility of trying to be the best. If you are the Trying to be the best, inshallah, either you become the best or at least good. But if you are just pleased with passing the minimum requirement, then there's a chance that you may fail. So you should try, inshallah, to be example for other people. May Allah, inshallah, help you. May Imam Zaman, inshallah, be helping you and guiding you. And inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his rahmah to all mu'mineen, marhumin especially those who have served this community, those who have served the community of Ahlul Bayt in centuries, those who have helped us so that today we have true understanding of Islam, our great ulama, our maraja, our martyrs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa to all brothers and sisters who are ill, to all people who are ill in any part of the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give peace and security to all people who live under fear, under truth. And may Allah make, inshallah, our Imam Zaman happy with us and answer his du'as for his faraj and for us, inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillah rabbil alamin.